But I've now amassed uh, about 14 days playtime, which I believe is about 336 hours. I've got two level 100 characters. Uh, that's Rogue and a Druid. Uh, I've killed Uber Lilith on both of them using non-cheesy builds. Did it like the ethical way. And what you're probably thinking immediately is reading the title is that uh, obviously you're going to have issues with the game. You know, you've played it too much. You're going to be burnt out. All the usual stuff that I hear all the time. And you're completely right. Obviously, if someone plays a game that is designed for people to play for maybe one or two hours a day and you make it your life's work to, you know, play it and understand it and make content for it, it's going to get old real fast. And it does. It's why personally I jump from game to game. I play different ARPGs. It's because I don't have that attention span to stick with one game for that long. I, I digest the content, I spit it out and I, I go into the next thing. It's why I love these seasonal games and it's why I'm really hoping that they don't conflict in any way. But no, you're completely right. And I always try to be conscious of that in the games I play because I know how I play them and how I choose to play them. It's not reflective really of probably 99% of the people that play these games. It's easy when you're streaming and making content because you're mainly exposed to people with a similar level of interest in the game that you are and it's easy to forget that there are thousands thousands and thousands even millions in some cases with Diablo of people that play the game and just don't give a shit about Twitch or YouTube and they're not bothered they're just there for a good time so I like to try and you know I have opinions that aren't necessarily things that are good for me. Uh, I do ask for things that are good for me in games when I know that it won't impact the average player. But I, I typically want things that are good for the game because especially in ARPGs, there is such a big gap between, you know, let's let's use Bob as our example. Bob is, you know, uh, he's a father of 50 and he gets home and he gets an hour to play. And this is a casual. This is probably a lot of you guys. You, you play for a few hours, maybe digest a bit of content online. Uh, and then there's obviously DGENs like me who play for double digit hours per day. There's a big gap. I am very aware of that. And I'm going to do my absolute best to come at this from a perspective, as I say, of what is good for the game and not necessarily good for me, because I can say wholeheartedly with, this is with no shade intended. Yeah, this is actually a positive thing, I believe. And it's that Diablo 4 is not made for me in its current state. And yeah, I, I do really enjoy it. And I'm excited to see what they introduce with the coming seasons. Uh, but here are my biggest problems with Diablo 4 after, you know, 300 plus hours played in the past month. So the first thing I want to talk about is the end game. Now in these ARPG games, you know, I play Torchlight, Path of Exile, Last Epoch, Diablo 4 now. I like to play at the very peak of the content. I like to do the hardest stuff and, and try and push it to the absolute limit, try and farm the most gold, currency, make monstrosity builds. Uh, like in Torchlight or Farm 11 Mirrors uh, from Ritual like I did in PoE. Or just push High Corruption in Last Epoch. These are the things I like to do. And in Diablo, it's kind of difficult after level 70 to kind of justify pushing that much further. And there are reasons for that that go into more loot and trading, which we'll talk about later. But firstly, in terms of the content, there are six key things in the endgame you can do. Obviously, that's World Boss, Helltide, Tree of Whispers, Nightmare Dungeons, Uber Lilith, and PvP. PvP I'm going to strike straight away. I'm not a PvPer, so I'm not even going to pretend to have any kind of take on that. Um, I, I don't really have a good you know, point of reference to understand whether or not PvP is good. World Boss, first of all, I think that World Bosses are actually really cool. One thing I really like about this game, as opposed to the other games that I play, is that I can be talking to chat and I can go, yo, boys, there's a, there's a World Boss coming up. You guys want to hang out, do a World Boss. It's really fun. I love that. I can't do that in other games. In PoE, a lot of the time I'm actively griefing if I invite people in to do stuff with me. It's just... I'm going to be waiting for them to keep up or they're going to be waiting for me. It's really annoying. And I like this more community aspect of the game where there are things in the open world that I can say, all right, boys, let's, let's group up. We've got some stuff to do, whether it's Helltides or World Bosses. So for that reason, I think World Bosses are actually in a good state. I never want them to be at a point where you absolutely have to do them. I think that would be really, really bad, especially since we're on like an eight hour timer. Imagine having to set your alarm once every eight hours to log in and kill a world boss. No one wants to do that, right? So world bosses, I think are in a good state. I think they're fine. Maybe they could be a bit more rewarding, but there's a fine line between mandatory and not and i think erring on the side of not is probably the way to go then we have hell tides hell tides is one of my favorite pieces of content in the game one of the most efficient ways to get xp is one of the most efficient ways to get loot you can get obels from it so you can farm out your aspects um it's really obviously it's quite easy because you've got the hell tides um third party tool. ultimately i think it's fine the way it is maybe i'd like to see some more cool stuff involved with hell tides i would maybe like some more hell tide specific events rather than just the normal events that you have they're just on a quicker timer that would be cool i think if it's more of a kind of again a community thing where there's like a horde come in or there's some kind of i don't know big wave of demons and then you're going to drop tons of cinders maybe get some loot i think that'd be really cool uh, i would love for them to explore hell tides a bit further next we'll talk about tree of whispers i don't really have a lot to say about this it's kind of it just it's not very good in the end game it, leveling up if you're on an all it's it's very nice you know you're traveling through the world you can unlock your map you can get 10 grim favors you can go get some loot but in the end game it's kind of naff i would love to be more excited 
about going to these different regions and unlocking my grim favors and getting some cool loot but as of right now pretty much get the same loot from a tree of whispers as you would just run in an event in a dungeon so why would i not just do dungeons now let's go on to nightmare dungeons this is probably the one where I have the most to talk about, but I'm, I'll try and keep it concise. The fact that Nightmare Dungeons is just the case of number gets bigger and it's entirely just prestige, really, in the end game. It's just, you know, saying, oh, I can farm it. There's there's nothing more to it than that. You don't get more. You don't get anything from it. Maybe you get some more glyph XP. But the time you're actually farming uh, those super high Nightmare Dungeons, you better, you better have your glyphs leveled already. You know what I mean? So Nightmare Dungeons kind of suck in my opinion it's nice that they're so good for xp now but the fact that the loot doesn't scale with them or you're not encouraged to run the highest tier content and the affixes are kind of just annoying it's very frustrating so yes for xp fantastic change the teleport was brilliant but the loot is the big problem the fact that the best way to still farm loot is just to go into a regular dungeon with a party of four people is a huge problem uh, uber lilith this is where i've spent a large part of my time i absolutely love this kind of solo raid boss experience i think bosses are something blizzard's pretty good at yeah they have some hits they have some misses but yeah blizzard do bosses pretty well i love the lost ark style bosses where it's you know pretty long fight with a progressive thing think of like Volton where he's deleting the arena i love that about lilith i love that the fight progresses and each stage feels like you know, a different layer of progression that you can learn and understand what to do next time. And it did feel like that in most cases. It felt like the thing I learned one pull, I could carry into the next and do better. However, there are a lot of things about the fight that make it very unfun to do. There are bugs. Uh, there are bugs with some of the waves that make them just appear faster or not follow the preset rules that the waves typically seem to follow on every wave except two of them, which is the first wave after a set of ad spawns. They're always bugged for whatever reason. Um, I'm surprised this hasn't been fixed yet. Secondly is the seeming randomness of Lilith. I, I ran her so many times, you get into this pattern of you know what she's going to do, whether it's on a timer or she has a rotation. Nine times out of ten, I could tell you what she's going to do. But on the tenth, she's just going to make something up. And it almost feels like maybe that's a bug, because why would it be nine times out of ten she does the same thing? Or maybe it's even more than nine times out of ten. And then the tenth is just something completely random that screws you over. It seems really weird to me that... A fight this difficult and this demanding of you in terms of time and gear and effort is actively trying to punish you for learning it. You you have to spend attempts and time. If you learn parts of the fight, you should be able to progress it. And I think that that's completely fine. But this fight in some ways doesn't, doesn't really allow you to do that. But outside of those, which I'm almost convinced are bugs, um, I think the fight is tremendous and I'm really excited for the future bosses in the game. The loot is another aspect we'll come on to later. So the second thing I want to talk about is loot. And that's kind of where I where i sit in most of these games i focus on farming up the loot you know in poe i'm responsible for some of the currency guides uh, in torchlight that's basically the entire thing i do i just try and min max you know farming as much currency as i can on these super fast characters epoch has a system where as you go higher and higher you get more magic find but this game has nothing like that you are as likely to find an amazing item in a tier one nightmare dungeon as you are a tier 100 i, I see a lot of people under the impression that the tier of Nightmare Dungeon somehow affects the number of Ancestrals you receive. Uh, I've done some testing on this with some of my friends. It seems like this is absolutely not the case. What affects the number of Ancestrals you will personally drop is not the level of content you're doing, it's your level. Your character level determines how many Ancestrals you'll drop. It's not the content that determines the loot, it is your level, as far as I can tell, which doesn't encourage you to run hard content. The only desirable thing about running hard content if you're that way inclined is the prestige and the the ability to say i did that right and for most people they don't give a shit they, they don't care about that they just want to ma make their character cool they don't care they don't want to go and tell their friends yo dude i ran at level 85 nightmare dungeon no one cares it's you want to be in there because you get more loot and nightmare dungeons just don't do that so the fact that the hardest content in the game doesn't drop the best loot is ridiculous to me coming from other games it just is completely out of place it doesn't make sense this isn't good for anyone people are going to say well what's the point in me progressing my character if you know there's no reason to do hard content the best way to farm loot is to do this same dungeon on repeat reset it in a group and do it over and over again i think that's the worst thing about diablo and what i've hated the most probably about playing so far so the next thing we're going to talk about is the rare uniques now this is a very contentious topic for whatever reason i have no understanding of why it is so contentious if you defend this, I'd probably encourage you to go and watch some videos about how people can't comprehend large numbers, about 
This is why people use visual aids to represent large numbers. You know, when someone shows you a grain of rice and then goes, here's a billion grains of rice, and you kind of go, holy shit, that's a lot of rice. Well, this is one of those situations. These are so unfathomably rare that the only way for someone to accurately tell you how likely it is for you to get one is to say that they don't exist. That is how rare these things are. They might as well not exist. Yes, a lot of those hours aren't going to be put into this game at 85 and above. I understand that. The likelihood of you farming one is probably higher than people actually think. However, they are still so rare that one grandfather has been dropped and documented. Three Shakos, I think, have been documented. Miratir doesn't even begin to describe what these are. And for some reason, the people defending this are the people that actually maybe don't play the game as much. And maybe this is a case of, uh, you know, we're on the same playing field. I'm not going to get it, so at least you can't get it. Maybe it's something like that. I don't want to insult those people and say that's what they're thinking. But I think that might be part of it. Because no, I don't think that because I play a lot, I should have access to every item in the game. Absolutely not. But if I don't have access to every item in the game, what do you have access to? Look at a mirror. I've never dropped a mirror. I played Path of Exile for 12,000 plus hours. I found 11 in Ritual, but they were pretty common in Ritual. I've never dropped a mirror, and yet people come into my chat all the time telling me they've dropped a mirror. I'm like, good for you. That's, I mean, it's, it's a really cool thing. I'm excited because I, I'm cons constantly reminded that not only does it exist, but people are dropping them. Not a single person I know or in the West has dropped one of these super rare items. That's crazy. To me. Absolutely crazy. And I think it needs to be looked at because it's not fun. And isn't that what this is all about? The next thing is loot filters. This is something Last Epoch does incredibly well. You can literally make your own loot filter in game and the game will not show you items you don't want to see. Now, I'm not saying we need something that um, incredible. You don't need a loot filter that calls items from the ground necessarily, but at least make it. So maybe you could have something where if you pick up an item and it's not part of your loot filter that you want, maybe it's just immediately marked as junk. So you can go back to town, you're still getting your gold for selling these items. Selling items is a big part of making gold. So understandably, you're still going to want to pick them up. You don't necessarily want them to be called. So maybe something like that, or even just something like Torchlight. In Torchlight, you can just lock an item. So if you salvage all your items, you get to keep the one you locked. And I don't know why it doesn't work that way in this game. It's kind of backwards. The next thing I'd like to talk about is trade. Trade in this game is really weird. You know, it's, it's one of those things in these games where it adds an element of excitement to farming. You're running through a dungeon and you're only salvaging your loot. You know, every time you get a full inventory, it's very static the amount of gold you're going to get back. If you add in this idea that you can drop something that might be valuable to someone else, suddenly there's more, you know, peaks to your farming and it just makes it more enjoyable. I feel like I don't really need to describe too much why trades, you know, fun for the game. But it, I get that in a game where right now a large portion of the content is progression of your character, I understand why not having such easy access to trade might be a detriment i'd never want to you think you do but you don't anybody but in this instance maybe that's the case right maybe having trade would be detrimental because if you think of something like path of exile a lot of players will make a character farm up then they'll farm an alt right they'll make a new character they'll have a set level in gear they'll blast through the campaign then they'll go into legions and they'll get to level 95 maybe even go all the way to 100 by just paying for it then the game begins, right? They equip their gear and there's so much to do even at that point because there's so much to progress in the end game. And this game doesn't have that yet. Most of the content in the game right now is that progression. So I understand trade not being maybe as perfect as it could be, but there are still, if they intend to have trade, there are definitely some improvements they need to make. For example, why does gear drop at item level 100? Why am I not allowed to trade with people any? Because I leveled up, you know what I mean? Why, why is the most efficient way to make gold trade in to sit between 60 and 70 and try and get as much loot as you can without getting as too much xp to level up it's a bit weird in my opinion that's trade also going to third party tools kind of weird I'd, I'd like to see something in game i wouldn't go as far as saying an auction house i think auction house is a slippery slope maybe one day but there are things they can try before that to see um kind of where the sweet spot is for allowing people to trade items but i i just as much as i enjoy trade i kind of get it right now the fourth thing i want to talk about and one of the most important things i think in any arpg and that is moments. And what I mean by moments is it shouldn't be predictable. This is something Last Epoch struggles with. It's very predictable. You can realistically know how long it's going to take you to do a map because it's just event running. You know, you've got to run to the prisoners and free them and blah, blah, blah. Games like these, they need variation when you're running content. If, if you choose to run Nightmare Dungeons on repeat, it shouldn't be super predictable. And this game actually does some things really good. Butcher. Butcher's a great example of this. I get excited when I see Butcher every single time. No matter what, I hear him say, what does he say? Uh, 
of fresh meat. Uh, it's super exciting. It's pog, right? And you're going to drop a unique some of the time. But then events are kind of the opposite of that. They're, they're so common. They're happening all the time. You get like maybe two or three ancestrals from them if you're a decent level. Uh, and most of the time they're really boring. It's just a minute of, I don't know, kill mobs, kill normal mobs for a minute. It's really, really, really bad. Uh, I don't know why they're so common. They should be rarer, more impactful, more exciting to find. And the current level of rarity, they're just too frequent for them to be exciting. And that takes away from one of the biggest things that games can do in the end game, which is to introduce a bit of variance. Torchlight does this perfectly with its end game system. They have trait cards that you can have on your maps and they'll add effects to the maps. And these are very, very random. And there are chances for you to get incredibly, incredibly powerful ones because every five maps you redraw your trait cards. So it kind of encourages you because, you know, any single reroll, maybe you're going to get that really good draw and you're going to get a ton of loot. This variance adds excitement to the end game. And right now, I think the end game in terms of dungeon running is too static. And the final thing that I would kind of describe as a moment in, in Diablo would be goblins. Goblins are just chests on legs. They don't really drop more than a, a chest would from an event. It's just an event on legs that you can kill real quick. They could be rarer and, and more exciting, drop some cooler stuff. I do think this is important in these kind of games. I think this is really important. You know, there's none of that oh shit moment. And I think this game needs more. I hope this video wasn't too rambly. I never really make videos like this, but I thought I'd give my thoughts on Diablo. Uh, I'm really excited for the future of this game. Despite all these things I said, this may have sounded quite negative, but I'm very, very excited about the future of Diablo. And I think a lot of the upcoming changes they will make for the next season will likely address some of these concerns that I have. Uh, but I'll catch you next time, boys.